I really hope you're not currently making this massive relationship mistake. That's what we're going to talk about on this episode of Wonderful Life, how to save yourself from this huge, huge, huge mistake. I think it's pretty amazing how all of a sudden women get ESP on the first date of meeting someone and all of a sudden it's like, I just know he's my soulmate. You just know it's right when it's right. Like all of a sudden you've got some view into the future. And if you've ever seen a friend do this, or maybe you yourself have, the person gets really involved really quickly or even married very quickly. And they'll say, well, when you know, you just know. And then it doesn't work out. Well, I guess you didn't really know, did you? Hi, I'm Mary Dittman. I'm an award-winning business professor on the collegiate level and the creator of College on Fleek and Wonderful Life. Wonderful Life is my way of describing what it feels like when you've made peace with being single. Now, I know there are a lot of women out there who prefer singleness. They don't want a relationship, but I've never felt that way. I've always wanted to be married and have a family, but I'm well over 40 and that hasn't worked out for me. And that's always been a real source of sadness for me because a big part of my definition of a fulfilled life is being a wife and a mother. But I got to the point where I said, I've got to make peace with being single because it does not seem to be changing. And I just wanted to be happy in my life. I didn't want to spend my whole life being sad because I was single. And that's what wonderful life is about. It's not about trying to get you to prefer singleness. I don't prefer singleness but it's helping you be happy while you're single, even if you're not happy because you're single. Many of us have fallen victim to this particular relationship mistake. I have, I've watched my friends do it, and most of the time it ends in disaster. Are there exceptions where people get a happy ending? Yeah, sure. But usually it's because both people are committed to staying in the marriage or the relationship long term, no matter what. Majority of the time though, when you rush into something fast, it's gonna fall apart. And that's because you don't really know the person. One of my favorite authors and teachers is Marianne Williamson and she lectures on The Course in Miracles. And one of the things that she says is that that feeling when you first meet someone of like, oh my gosh, like they're perfect, they're so wonderful. She has stated that from a Course in Miracles perspective, that's like the you're seeing the true them and then you get disillusioned because like all the kind of ego stuff gets in the way. I disagree and I'm more with the camp that says when you first meet someone and you're like, oh my gosh, like they're perfect and they're so wonderful, they can do no wrong that it's not because your true self is seeing their true self, it's because your brain is drunk on chemicals. And then what happens is reality sets in and you do get to know who you're dealing with. And how many of us would say we're dating someone, we're like, well, he's a real jerk and a loser. I mean, sometimes we do that, but I've caught myself saying, if I'm dating someone new, I'll say, oh, he's just really a great guy. Well, yeah, they all seem great in the beginning. And if, if you're not saying they're great in the first few months, you ought not to be going out with them. But what happens when you meet someone and you're excited is some things happen in your brain. First of all, you get a hit of dopamine, which is the feel good chemical. That's the same thing that gets people addicted to cocaine. And also you can get some serotonin, which makes you feel happy and peaceful. And the other thing that you get as a woman is you get a hit of oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone or the cuddle hormone. And that's especially true if you are physically intimate with a man and not even just sex. I mean, hugging and kissing for a woman that stimulates her oxytocin and it helps her feel bonded. Now, if you are sexually intimate with a man, you will be super, super emotionally bonded to him, partly because of the oxytocin. One study that I have seen is that it can take up to two years after you've been sexually intimate with a man, it can take up to two years to get over that relationship. And you know, when you're in love, you feel like 
everything is great, you have all this energy, you're excited, there's more color in the world, you're more creative, you're more patient with people. And again, that's because of dopamine. And again, respectfully, I'm going to have to disagree with my mentor, Marianne Williamson, who says, well, the reality is those first few months, and then the illusion sets in. I don't agree. I think the first few months are fun. It feels good. You've got this chemical high happening and you're excited. You get some of the same thing when you start a new job or maybe you get a new car or you you move into a new house and you get that excitement. Well, then the reality starts to come in. Like the payment book arrives or the house needs repair or you start to figure out there's some things you don't like at your new job. And as you get to know a person and some of that chemical rush wears off because you're not going to stay in that high forever. You can't do it. Your brain can't sustain that. And so when people are like, well, you know, I just don't feel the way I used to. One of my friends one time, she was married for like 12 years. And she said to me, I'm thinking about divorcing my husband. I was like, whoa, what's up? I said, what's going on? And she said, it just doesn't feel like it used to. Well, no kidding. It's not going to. You're drunk on chemicals. What hopefully would happen is you start out really high and then, yeah, the chemical part is going to come down, but hopefully that's going to develop into a true love and respect for the other person, a deep friendship and a deep sense of love. You'll still, hopefully you'll still be attracted to the person and you'll still be excited about them, but it's not going to feel like the trippy first three months felt. That's not the norm. So when we're in and out of relationships, it's a lot of times because we think, I'm trying to get back to what it was. You know, when we first were together, everything was so great. Yeah, no kidding. But even if everything is great, it's not going to stay the way it was the first three months. Now, I think chemistry is important. Not all women feel that way. But I feel like that physical chemistry is important. And a lot of times it really is important because... For a man, a sexual relationship with a woman that he loves, that's important. Well, if you're not attracted to your man, you don't usually want to have sex with him, that's going to be a problem. But I do believe that chemistry is important. However, you have to be realistic and say that crazy chemistry that we felt in the beginning, it's not always going to be like that because we're going to go through this relationship and we're going to have the real life is going to set in. You know that there's bills to pay and somebody's sick and we're not going to agree on everything. Or if one or both of you has children, there's going to be issues there. And Hollywood feeds us a steady diet of images and movies and TV shows that show us that we should have that high all the time. That crazy in love feeling all the time. Look at one of the number one shows for a long time was Scandal. And the relationship there between Olivia Pope and Fitz. Well, Fitz is married. Their relationship pretty much only consists of looking at each other longingly and having sex in a closet. And it makes it seem like they keep this crazy chemistry all the time. Yeah, but that's because when you're with a married man, you have no reality. You're not mad at him because he's not taking out the trash. You're not ferrying kids back and forth because they're sick. You're not worried about paying the bills. You don't have any responsibility. You're not nagging at him to get the roof fixed. And my point here is that a lot of times women mistake that crazy in love of like, oh my gosh, like this is so great, I like him, which is awesome. And you should enjoy that feeling because guess what? If the relationship doesn't last, that part is really fun. And if the relationship does last, you're never gonna have that first three months again. So enjoy it and like really get into it, but understand and enjoy it for what it is, which is it's like being on a roller coaster. You can't live on a roller coaster. You can go get on a roller coaster and have fun while the ride lasts. It's the same thing in the first few months of a relationship. You can't live there forever. Enjoy it while it lasts. But understand that it's because your brain is getting all these chemicals. It's like if you just were snorting cocaine all the time. People who are addicted to cocaine, they think everything's great. They have a lot of energy. They're creative. They can go, go, go. They're really fun. But... You can't do cocaine and live very long. And it's the same with those feelings of, oh my gosh, I'm in love, I met this great guy, which is awesome. But don't mistake that for some 
all of a sudden spiritual or psychic, you know, like, this is my soulmate. You're not going to know that because you're drunk on chemicals. I mean, you don't let a drunk person decide if they're okay to drive. And you know what? If it really is meant to be and that guy is your soulmate, then what's the harm in getting to know each other for six to 12 months? And I have seen many of my friends meet someone and go, oh no, it's meant to be, that's it. And they get married and then they're in a disaster. And the other part of this that can be very confusing is a lot of times men are right there with you. Now, I'm gonna just tell you, for me, when a man is all of a sudden, like I'm talking three, four, five weeks in, he's saying things like, I love you, I wanna get married. To me, that's a red flag because it indicates one of two things. Number one, it indicates a lack of impulse control and that he's not able to pace and get to know me. But number two, my experience has been that men who want to rush things are trying to get you locked into the relationship before you find out what you're dealing with. And a lot of times as a woman, we think, well, he's the one who's saying he's in love. He's the one who's talking about wanting to get married. And we think that that gives us a sense of security because like, well, gosh, he really feels this way about me. If he really does, then again, you need to pace this thing for six to 12 months because here's the reality. Men do fall in love fast and they fall out of love fast. And if you've never had that experience, I'm going to tell you something. It really hurts. It is very painful to watch a man fall out of love with you. So help yourself out and don't move so fast. I mean, what's the rush? Look, I mean, I know we're all getting older, but come on. Now, in my case, because I'm over 40 and having a baby is not in my plan at this point, I don't need to rush to get married because I'm not trying to beat my biological clock. But even if you're at an age, let's say you're in your 30s and, and you need to be thinking about if you want children. And if you decide, yes, I want children, and you decide, yes, I want children and I want to be married, then you do need to be serious about finding somebody. But I would still recommend give it six to 12 months because what you don't want is to find out that your husband, who you think is going to be the father of your children, has a criminal record, or he's a psychopath, or he's a sociopath, or he has some kind of pathological personality disorder, or he's bankrupt, or he's not going to hold down a job, or he's abusive, or he has an addiction, and there's a lot of that out there. And by the way, a lot of those guys are the ones who want to rush things because they want to go ahead and lock you down so that you're too enmeshed to want to end the relationship. So just tap the brakes, girl. But I wanna know what you think. What do you think about moving fast in relationships? I'm against it. I think I've been clear on that. But Wonderful Life is a dialogue, not a monologue. And I wanna know what you think. So put your answer in the comments and let us know how you feel about moving fast in relationships. If you're like me, and you've had your heart broken because you moved fast in a relationship, you might want to check out our ABCs of Healing. If you go to bit.ly forward slash ABCs of Healing, you can get that. It's free. Also, if you like my cute snazzy baseball shirt, Wonderful Life, we have those and many other designs. If you go to wonderfullife.com and click on shop, we've got a bunch of new cool stuff. At wonderfullife.com, we post a new blog every Friday. And make sure you join us next time right here on Wonderful Life.